In this video, I'm gonna show you how to run a Windows XP virtual machine on your computer. And before we get into the tutorial, I wanna give you two warnings. Because Windows XP is not being actively developed by Microsoft, there is probably security vulnerabilities. Microsoft is not actively patching Windows XP anymore. It has been discontinued, so please be aware of that. The other warning is the fact that you cannot buy Windows XP, so you have to obtain a copy of it, and this is something that is copywritten by Microsoft. So I'm going to show you how to get a copy of Windows XP from archive.org, but I'm not condoning it. Again, this is just for educational purposes only. You should probably have a license key if you're going to follow along on this tutorial. So anyway, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and hop on into the actual tutorial. Uh, like I said, you can get a copy of Windows XP at archive.org. I'll have this link below. Um, use at your own risk. Who knows if there's viruses on here? I did read through the comments. There have been quite a lot of reviews. None of them had mentioned that. So I think you're okay, but what you're, going to, what you're going to want to do is download this ISO image onto your computer, which I have already done. I have it right here on my desktop, and that's all we need from here, so I'll get out of that. The other thing you need is VirtualBox. VirtualBox allows you to run virtual machines, including Windows XP, on your computer. So if you come to the download section, uh, I'm on a Mac computer, so I'm going to download this right here. Uh, if you're on Windows, download the Windows version, Linux, Linux version. And that'll just be a couple minutes until that downloads, so I'll skip forward through this. All right, so now that that has downloaded, let's open it up and run the installer. So what we're going to do on a Mac, at least, is uh, double-click this icon to run the installer. We'll allow that. Continue, install, enter your password, install software, and we'll let that do its thing. Okay, that has finished. The installation was successful. Let's close out of that. And we'll move the installer to the trash. Okay. And now, as it says here, run the VirtualBox application from the Applications folder. So let's open up our Applications folder. Uh, we're done here with Google Chrome. And now we have VirtualBox right here. So let's open that up. And there we go. Here is our VirtualBox uh, VM manager. So what we want to do is add a new virtual machine. So click on this green add button. I'm sorry, don't do that. We want to make a new virtual machine. So click on the new button. And what we're going to call it is Windows XP or whatever you like. Um, everything else looks good here. This is where your virtual machine will exist. The type is going to be Microsoft Windows and it'll be XP 32 bit. So click on continue. Uh, I'm going to pick um, two gigabytes of RAM, so 20, 48 megabytes, click continue. Uh, 10 gigabyte hard disk looks good, so we'll create that. VirtualBox disk image is what we want, so click on continue. Dynamically allocated is appropriate, so click continue. And finally, go ahead and click on create. So here is our Windows XP virtual machine. It is powered off. And if we try to start it right now, it's going to fail. Kernel driver is not installed. Um, we get this error message and click OK. Fail to open a session for the virtual machine Windows XP. So um, at least on a Mac, you have to go into system preferences and go to security and privacy. And it says down here, system software from developer Oracle America has been updated. Uh, what we want to do is click on this lock icon, log in with your credentials, and we want to allow this uh, access okay so um, and that's going to require a restart of the computer so i'm going to go ahead and do that and i'll see you on the other side okay i have restarted my computer so let's go ahead and open up VirtualBox and try this again so here's our windows xp machine again it's powered off so let's go ahead and start that up and this time we have an option to associate an image with the virtual machine. So uh, click this yellow folder icon here. And what we're going to do is add the ISO file that we downloaded from earlier. That's on my desktop. So let's click on that and click on open. Click on the blue choose button right here and hit start. This will go ahead and boot up the virtual machine with Windows XP. And you will see that it is very small, but we'll fix that later. Don't worry. And this is going to go through the Windows setup. And actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and try to make this a little bit bigger. So click on this monitor. Uh, we'll go to 200% size, and that, that is much better. Okay, so welcome to setup. Um, let's go ahead and continue with setting up Windows XP. Hit F8 to agree to the license terms. Uh, this is where we want to install it on this unpartitioned space. So click 
or hit enter and NTFS file systems okay and let's go ahead and let this format okay it looks like the setup has finished it says your computer will reboot in three seconds and this is not your computer that you're working on this is just the virtual machine that's going to reboot and you can see that it happening now we got the Windows XP logo. Look at that, that looks beautiful. If you see these pop-ups up here, Virtual Machine reports that the Guess OS supports mouse pointer integration, just exit out of that. We'll take care of that later and let this finish the installation. Here's a regional and language options prompt. So I'm gonna click next, type in my name, click next. And actually for the product key that was on archive.org. So go back there and you can see that right here simply type that in and when you have that click on next i'm going to call my computer tony xp and type in a password go ahead and set your time zone if it's not automatically detected and click next for network settings typical settings is fine so click on next you can choose a work group or computer domain if you'd like the computer will reboot one more time and there is the classic windows xp logo again you might see this pop up about display settings. That's a good thing, so click on OK. We get a little bit better resolution and a bigger screen. And look at this, Windows XP is booting up for the first time. We'll go ahead and click on Next. Uh, we don't have to protect it, so not right now. Click on Next. If you want to set up internet, we can do that right here. So click on next. I'm not going to register with Microsoft. So I'll hit that radio button, hit next. My name, Tony, next and finish. We are now logged into Windows XP. There is, well, first of all, before we explore just a little bit, uh, let's fix this resolution. So let's go into properties and appearance. Nope, I'm sorry, settings. There it is. So screen resolution, let's max that out. Hit apply. And wow, we got a, a full desktop here. Hit yes. And okay, and from from the desktop, uh, this will be very annoying to automatically or manually go up and down like this. So let's fix that from outside. If you remember earlier, we changed the resolution to 200%. So let's go back down to 100% here and we can make that a little bit smaller. So you'll just have to work around here. Maybe 150% is the right option and that actually looks really good so uh, we have windows xp running in this window right here now if you remember that guest additions thing that kept on popping up let's take care of that now we can go to devices insert guest edition cd image and what that's going to do is mount that into our uh, computer here so if we go to my computer you'll see the virtual box guest editions show up here. And we just wanna go through this setup to uh, configure everything as best as we can as far as the virtual machine plays with virtual box. So go ahead and go through this setup right now. Slowly but surely this is moving along. It's now installing the mouse driver and that has finished. So let's uh, hopefully one more reboot. Let's reboot our XP virtual machine one more time. And now that we're booted back in, it looks like our display settings were erased. So let's go ahead and uh, have that automatically correct it. That looks better. Um, let's go back into the properties and settings and increase our resolution all the way, whatever makes sense for you. That looks good. And maybe if you want it to be a little bit bigger, you can scale it up uh, this time to 200%. So that looks good to me. Now you have a much more um, responsive desktop experience so you can come in here all the classic things such as oh, what do we got in here paint you gotta love paint paint is uh working pretty well um if you go over to all programs accessories um what else do we got in here oh entertainment sound recorder that was one of my favorite things um we also have games who doesn't remember these games so Solitaire, Classic, Pinball, Minesweeper, all of these cool games that you can play around with. Um, we won't do that in this video. I just want to remind you that they are here 
And the one other thing that I want to show you is how to exchange files between your virtual machine and your host computer, which is Mac, my MacBook in, in this case. So I'm going to exit out of here and it's just going to save the state of the machine if I keep this option on. Um, I, don't, I don't have to power off the machine or anything like that. Uh, so we'll start right back up to this next time we come in here. So um, what we're going to do is to exchange files between the two systems is go to settings, shared folders, and I'm going to add a new folder here. Um, let's go into other. And I'm just going to share my desktop right now, which has these couple screen recordings, a folder, and the ISO file. Uh, we will do, you can do read only if you want, but we'll auto mount it. Um, I forget, do I have to do something for the mount point? I don't think so. Click OK and OK. Failed to save the settings. Ah, the machine has to be running. So let's open it up. And the machine is uh, running now. So let's go back into settings, shared folders, add a new folder folder path will pick the desktop again open that we'll do auto mount we'll make it permanent this time since that option is now here click OK OK and that seems to be working so let's open up the virtual machine go to start my computer and now you'll see this network drive called desktop so if you open that up you can see the stuff folder the ISO file the movie file and the other movie file. So that's uh, let's let's send something over to my desktop from the virtual machine. So we'll do new text document. We'll just call it test, and we'll say inside of here, hello world. Save that. Yes, and we'll drag that into here. And there it is on our local machine right here, test.txt. And that's what that looks like. Uh, I said hello world. Anyway, um, thank you guys for watching. If you want to see more videos like this from me in the future, subscribe to this channel. If you do, I'll see you in the next one.